is only at sea. All ship shape from stern to scupper. Tide hunter, you're not like another. Sweetly, sweetly blew the breeze. On me alone it blew. I'll take that. Hand it over. Deny. No goal for you. Tide hunter, you left too soon. To the deeps with you. Blow with the fool. I thee to battle. I dub thee. I scepter. Ramming speed. If the demons of the cataract couldn't see my fleet, then this lot doesn't stand a chance. Ha ha ha! I haven't seen such a pack of tree weasels since we rousted the trembling isles free of all the tree weasels. Look sharp, splay them. That booty out, splay that booty out. Yes. Splay that booty out, splay that booty out. Splay that booty out, splay that booty out. Splay that booty out, splay that booty out. Belay that last order. <laughs> I'll save this for another day. Bootylicious. Step lively now. Your admiral is on board. Ha! Two to the one, to the one, to the three. I'll take that. Battle fury. Tide hunter. Rot in the sun. Damn. I thought this bottle would have rum. Three to the one, to the one, to the three. True peace is only at sea. All ship shape from stern to scupper. Tide hunter. You're not like another. Sweetly, sweetly blew the breeze. On me alone it blew. I'll take that. Hand it over. Ah, deny. No goal for you. Tide hunter, you left too soon. To the deeps with you. Blow with the fool. High thee to battle. I dub thee. I scepter. Ramming speed. If the demons of the cataract couldn't see my fleet, then this lot doesn't stand a chance. Ha ha ha. I haven't seen such a pack of tree weasels since we rousted the trembling isles free of all the tree weasels. Look sharp, splay them. That booty out, splay that booty out. Yes. Splay that booty out, splay that booty out. Splay that booty out, splay that booty out. Splay that booty out, splay that booty out. Belay that last order. <laughs> I'll save this for another day. Bootylicious. Step lively now. Your admiral is on board. Ha! Two to the one, two to the one, two to the three. I'll take that. Battle fury. Tide hunter. Rot in the sun. Damn. I thought this bottle would have rum. Three to the one, two to the one, two to the three. True peace is only at sea. All ship shape from stern to scupper. Tide hunter. You're not like another. Sweetly, sweetly blew the breeze. On me alone it blew. I'll take that. Hand it over. Ah, deny. No goal for you. Tide hunter, you left too soon. To the deeps with you. Blow with the fool. High thee to battle. I dub thee. I scepter. Ramming speed. If the demons of the cataract couldn't see my fleet, then this lot doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> I haven't seen Can I talk yet? Tell me what to talk. Results. Yep. Oh, all right. Hello, we like Dota, and welcome to a wonderful game between Team Tempest A and Sync Cats. I've seen neither of these teams play before. I'm very excited. My name is Juvu, uh, and I am joined by Steam Hams, my uh, co-commentator here. Give the people what they want, Gary. Okay, so today we are up against <laughs> Team Tempest. We are up Team Tempest EH, which is how you pronounce A in Canada, if you've never been there before. And then we've got Sync Cats. Uh, we usually start with the best banner uh, award. I don't know. Team Tempest has their banner cut in half. They didn't. It looks good, but it looks like they didn't upload it properly. Whereas Sync Cats, they got they got a nice repeating Sync Cat in there. I think I have to give it to Sync Cats. They managed to fit the whole cat in the banner, which is impressive to me. <laughs> So they definitely got some brownie points with me for that. Um, so already first phase bans going pretty quickly. Uh, we see Techies, Night Stalker, obvious easy meta ban coming out from Team Tempest. But then the Techies ban? Does Syncats have a, a, a pocket Techies player? They may, or they just don't want to play an hour and a half long game. Oh, I know that life. 
<laughs> and uh, on the other side, we got Crystal Maiden and uh, Trent Protector banned out. Two good supports. Get them out of the way. Um, final uh, final first phase ban coming out from Team Tempest is Ricky Maru. Richard, the Invisible Adios, Goat. Very, very annoying to play against. But I think easily dealt with, which is kind of makes me go, eh. I agree. Uh, there goes the Marana. That's a solid meta ban. The Ricky <laughs> maybe like pretty strong position four if played well. Maybe uh, Team mm -hmm. Tempest knows something we didn't. Uh, I don't haven't done any research on these two teams yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, first pick Earthshaker coming out. That shuts down a lot of picks for uh, for the Sync Cats. No more Phantom Lancer. No more Naga. All sorts of things like that. Earthshaker is a very safe uh, first pick, I think. I think he fills all the roles. He's a disabler. He can manipulate terrain as well as just like an insane amount of damage if you hit that uh, Echo Slam just right. Yep. Um, you can play him in, well, at least two or three roles too, so pretty versatile. Sand King, slightly less versatile. Generally sits in the <laughs> offlane as the three, can play the four. But also a very similar hero in that they're an early game initiator, a strong initiator with uh, lane presence. Absolutely, and there comes the Lena classic Sand King Lena combo. That's our classic I'm assuming. Combo. <laughs> That's uh, we used to run this back in uh, Heroes of New Earth days. Uh, yeah, very strong. Magnus lane. Pyromancer. Yeah, Magnus yeah. Pyromancer. Yeah, uh, easy double stun. Yeah, Sand King lands a stun, gives Lena time to land, line up the stun. Very possible this is a four position Lena since it was picked so early. Taking, uh, uh, and Coddle. Oh Coddle boy, we up. haven't seen Coddle. I don't. I haven't seen him in We Like Dota yet. Somebody hasn't think. watched Ti. Coddle's dead. He can't play him anymore. <laughs> but with the seven point two two, he did get some buffs, so maybe he is viable. Uh, what were the buffs exactly? I think he got improvements to his mana leak and chakra magic vaguely improved. Yeah, so I'll just take a peek here. Go down to my boy Coddle. Truly, I do love... Uh, so, Blinding Light uh, was buffed. The cooldown reduced. Cast range increased. Chakra Magic, the mana leak, it was increased. And then um, the level 25 talent increased from plus two Will-O-Wisp Flicker to plus three. So, you get a few extra wah wah wahs. wah wahs. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah, that... I mean, that might bring him back in. I guess it remains to be seen until we get to one of the, the first minor coming up or maybe even Mid Midas mode, but... I like the hero. I didn't really understand why he wasn't picked in TI anyhow. Uh, second phase bans, uh, Invoker, coming out from Team Tempest. Uh, that's a good ban. Uh, Invoker seems to be one of the comfort picks on Sync Cats. He's been picked twice so far uh, in this group stage. In the league. Hmm. So yeah, that's fair. When, when you're out of things to ban or you don't have a particular strategy you want to run, banning comfort heroes is always a good fallback strategy. This... Is this Team Tempest A's first game? I actually don't know. We could we could find out. I'm, it, on Dota Buff, it's just showing me one game. Let me check the... Uh, I could be wrong. Okay, wait one second. Let me check the matches. And Legion Commander. Like, Legion crazy. Commander ban coming out. As well as the Tiny ban. Everybody knows Tiny is pretty spicy. Yeah. They did nerf his tree throw. However, I don't think it impacts the hero too severely. Yeah, his strength comes from the fact that He's pretty tanky, and he, like like Earthshaker, can manipulate positioning. Um, the toss is just so strong. Here, let's see. Team Tempest. I might be crazy, but I don't and... think they've played yet. All right, let's find out. Ten seconds remaining. Uh, they played Lothar's Edgelords uh, in week two, but that was their, hmm. their first game. Uh, it looks like it may not have been recorded. Oh, interesting. Uh, according to the WDL website, the match was played. Team Tempest A versus Lothar's Edgelords, and Lothar's mm. won both games. Uh, so there goes the Magnus uh, getting rid of that Empower. They don't want to see it on whatever carry, uh, I guess, Team Tempest A may run. Magnus such a strong such strong support uh in that he can, he can provide just the empower to pa or juggernaut skip the battle fury save yourself an entire item dazzle third pick really strong lane presence coming out of sync cats this is the early game fighting lineup fingers crossed for a dazzle mid however i don't know <laughs> if it's gonna happen but fingers crossed always that is my loves, favorite always love seeing a mid dazzle 
All right, so coming out here from uh, Team Tempest, they may pick up the axe and still get rid of Shallow Grave, right? A good hard counter, yeah. Although if Shaker wants to be in the off lane, axe might be at odds with that. Um, it depends where they. That's the versatility of the Shaker, though. Is he can go anywhere. If they want to run an axe, they could do it. They can make a a roaming Earth Shaker, give him a pair of boots, two clarities. Uh, so if if I were going to draft an axe right now, I'd probably draft my one if I was thinking about axe, just to force the two picks out from uh, Sink Cats to see what they go. They do get a final if you get an axe, phase. Yeah. So if they pick up axe uh, right now, uh, Sink Cats can just get either a range hero, somebody with a good disengage, or just go a mostly magic damage lineup. The Dazzle is still viable if you don't go pure physical damage, just because of that Shallow Grave and the heal. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Put a mid. Alright, so there's the Wind Ranger pickup. She's pretty flexible. She can go in almost any lane, actually. Although she is susceptible to the uh, to the pure stuns coming out from... Okay, yeah, Drow pickup. Mm, there's the Wind drow. Ranger definitely susceptible to the Sanking Lena stun combo. Uh, like, no amount of wind running is going to get you away from that. Uh, I would say that they have pretty good tools to deal with the Wind Ranger, whereas they're not quite as good tools to deal with the Drow yet on Team Tempest's side. Yeah, uh, the Drow with the Dazzle is a lot of negative armor. Drow ignores your base armor. She can rip that apart with the Dazzle, increasing that. Uh, the Aura also helps Lena to hit hard, and if she is the 4 or the 5, she eventually does scale into that carry role. Uh, yeah. And Life Sealer's gonna have a hard time with that if he doesn't get a vehicle here. He needs a he needs a car to hop into. He needs a he needs a Storm Spirit car if that's a safe Wind Ranger. I don't know what he needs. Although he's got the Shaker as a as a blink carrier mm -hmm. for his vehicle, and that's a devastating combo. So I'm I don't know what they're gonna ban here. I'd probably if I'm. If I'm Sync Cats, I probably ban Storm Spirit. Although the three, that's nah, the four, that's, that's that the five. Yeah, that was their one. They're going for their two. I'm assuming. I mean, then the Team Tempest is likely grabbing their two here. I could be wrong though, but like, because Wind Ranger can yeah, be middle, it's, like it's, it's so shuffleable. Yeah, that's the advantage of picking these like super versatile heroes early in the draft. Is that there was can, a storm spirit, and you can always change your plans. Yeah, there. That's the ban I probably would have done, but I'm like I'm not very good at this game, so it's possible this isn't a good ban. Um, <laughs> I'm amazing at this game, and uh, <laughs> I right, probably banned that out too. All right, fair enough. Maybe I am good. I don't. I don't know, man. <laughs> right now, I'm a legend four, so my uh, ego is definitely Oof, broken. That new calibration. F in the Meepo! chat. Meepo. <laughs> Woo! Talking Meepo pick. Oh, this is this right, is terrifying. So Although the Sand King and the Lena will make short work of Meepo if they catch him. Like if they catch sand, like three Meepos in a Burrow Strike epicenter, like it's not gonna be a good time. I get so excited when I'm playing Drow and I see a Meepo because if my support is good enough to guarantee me my farm, I usually just rush to eggs and then I'll farm out that jungle and then I'll farm out that Meepo every time. Those bouncing arrows just just decimate him. Yeah, it depends. If the Meepo does get rolling quickly, he's gonna. If he gets that blink up fast, Drow is going to get shredded. And uh, Meepo and generally, even if he loses his lane, I actually don't know how this matchup works mid. I imagine this Meepo is mid. Uh, it's gonna be a. Uh, I think Viper is definitely gonna own at the start, but he's gonna need a little bit of help here. They're going to need to spend some time hunting the Meepo down. Because even if he loses lane, he just hits the jungle and comes out with like a 9 minute blank boots and like ru ruins your day. Mm -hmm. The nice part about the Viper, it does take away that Geo Strike, the Life Stealer's Life Steal if he's not raging, as well as uh, Earth Spirit's Aftershock. Yeah. Um, both these lineups are pretty fighty. I'm pretty excited. It, it looks like it's going to be a, like a battle. I think a lot of this game is going out. to be uh, it's going to be on the back of the Meepo. Um, if they can shut him down early on, then I think Sync Cats has a 
really strongly roll into late, roll into mid and late game. But if that Meepo gets an early lead, uh, they're just going to start steamrolling them with like, as soon as Shaker gets a blink up, the Meepo's going to be all over the map. Absolutely. And the fact that Meepo and Earthshaker synergize so well by putting those extra bodies on a hero is kind of insane. I like the fact that they pick up the Shaker because that way they can't, the enemy can't pick up a last second clutch Shaker uh, mm. to counter your Meepo. I guess, yeah, and the Coddle also works uh, against Meepo, kind of. You grab her out. But picking Meepo into Sand King is a risky business That's a maneuver. Play. That's a man who hopefully knows how to play, a man or woman who hopefully knows how to play Meepo, because a lot's going to be, <laughs> lot's going to be riding on him today. All right. So uh, a few introductions here. We got Foolishness on the Meepo, Sly on the Wind Ranger. We have 100 Me on the Earth Shaker. Uh, we have Ash and Re Ash and Array on our Life Stealer, and Hazard Yet Forward on the Keeper of the Light. Going off to the off lane here to check out our boys. We got on Sand King. Only difference. We got Monster. Monster. Oh, you're messing with me. on the Lena. Uh, we got Taters on our boy Viper, and then coming top we have Parker and Dazzle. Uh, a Cab X2. Not X1 on our boy Dazzle here. Uh, so, <laughs> Radiant side, setting up for these bounty rooms. Not quite wanting to show that the Coddle Lifestealer deck. Trying to hold their cards tight to their chest. It looks like it's going to be Wind Ranger, Urshik Hop, which is pretty a pretty good lane. You got a lot of stun. And the pause. First pause comes out. Good advice Tactical coming pause. in. Good advice coming in from Dota 2 client. Remain calm. Remember, it's only a game. Oh, pizza's here. Mm. That's oh, not a jealous. standard. Not a standard pause reason, generally speaking. He's <laughs> gonna eat pizza with one hand and play with the other. I guess. That's a bold move. I hope it's the Meepo player who's picking up the pizza, because that would be something to see. <laughs> Uh, so Drow uh, Dazzle is a decent lane. It's pretty strong. You got two range heroes that are gonna just try to harass this Earthshaker out of lane. Um, however, he is backed up by the Wind Ranger. It looks like yeah, no Orb of Venom or Blight on the Dazzle, so they're gonna have a little bit of a harder time pushing him out of the lane. Mm -hmm. uh, so Dazzle did opt to get that Sentry Ward, uh, which definitely makes it harder for you to get those higher impact items. Uh, it looks as though Lena is going to be playing the four. Picked up a Sage match, so I guess she's going to go straight into Bassy. Yeah, pretty good pickup for uh, for position four, Lena. It gives the Sand King some tankiness in lane, um, which he's going to need against the Nakes. Uh, do we know if the Coddle has picked up a... Yeah, he's got a Sentry for that Sandstorm. Ready. Yeah, this Dazzle looks like he just wants to counter uh, the ward that may be coming top. Wind Ranger is holding one, so Wind Ranger looks to be the four here. As Urshik does have the Quelling Blade, yep. I do agree that Pineapple is fine on pizza. Ooh, I mean, debatable. <laughs> I mean, we can fight it out. I like the sweetness of it sometimes, you know? I mean... If, if it's there, I would. I suppose I would eat it, but I would pick pretty much any other pizza if it's available. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Thrilling game so far. So far, uh, either team can really take it. Uh, checking it's, net it's worth. Yeah, if we look at the last hits and denies at the moment, you'll notice that actually Wind Ranger is at the top of the chart, but that's only because that's the arbitrary sorting order. Um, net worth, uh, t Team Tempest is up 100 gold, oh. um, as they did buy 100 more golden items. <laughs> well, I mean, going, I'm sure the Dota Plus assistant would tell us there's a 100% win chance right now. All right, and it looks like we got the unpause coming in. All right, so we're looking like we might have some early action up here. Earthshaker is just checking in it out. It's a little dangerous to go out against a Dazzle at level 1 because Poison Touch is insane. The fact that it refreshes upon every auto attack. Yep, there's the Poison Touch coming in. Drow, Drow opted arrows. for some uh, cold arrows here. They're going to go for the go Earthshaker. For this is going to be first it. blood, I think. There goes the stun. Drow's not giving oh. up, though. She's going to drop another arrow. And Earthshaker's going to go down. First blood going to Sink Cat. 
Well done from Sync Cats. A clutch fairy fire at the last moment. It wasn't quite enough to stay alive. TP back in from the air shaker, and he's like, nothing happened at all. Pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> So I'm expecting high action uh, from this off lane for Dyer. Um, the Lena Sand King, once they get level three, they're going to be able to put it on the Coddle. Oh my oh, gosh. Some action mid. Right off the hop, this Miko getting harassed and broken. Uh, let's see if he breaks his spirit, though. He had to pop one of his tangos already. He'll likely have to ferry himself more regen to stay in this lane. This Wind Ranger putting decent harass on Parker, but it seems like he isn't particularly scared. He's gonna tough it out. Meepo taking his farm behind tower here. Just to secure those last hits. It's not a bad way to do it. If you can get it back between the T1 and T2, that's secured. Looks like Lena might be making a rotation to mid here. She's got her Abassi finished up. Oh, and that was just a sentry that went down? Looking for that She war. drops a sentry to block the camp uh, ah. to make sure that they can't get anything from there. High level play. The Sand King is putting a lot of harass on this life stealer. He's going to stun into the big creeps here. Lena rotating back. Sand King is now level 2, so he does have that advantage. Checking up here on top. Uh, Earthshaker is going to take a lot of beats. Parker's going to keep putting that frost arrow on him. He's going to just try to juke here, and the Wind Ranger is wow. going to land that quality Beautiful. shackle. Quality shackle. The very balanced shackle that only hits when it's supposed to hit. <laughs> so Meepo has divided into two. He's going to use his poof to secure some farm here in the middle lane. This uh, this poison AoE from the Viper coming out is really doing a pretty good job of flexing him out of lane. He's got mm -hmm. that magic resist, but it's not really uh, so checking really bottom. stronger. Oh, Ash Andre was in a lot of danger. Uh, however, he did manage the rage walk away, and they're going to salve him just to get him out there. It always sucks to blow a salve like that, but if it keeps your carry alive, money well spent. <laughs> but he didn't get much out of it. So, did they misclick that salve? This is a dangerous position for him to stay in with this uh, explosive lane. So they're ferrying up some regen, I do believe. Check this career. Yeah, some salves are heading back up there. Oh, and the rage coming out from. Oh. Life Stealer pops the rage, successfully dodges it, but the pure auto attacks coming out from Monsters Lena were too much. Never forget about the auto attacks. Monsters waiting for him to come in. The stun's going to come down, but they're not going to chase anything off of it, the back of that. Uh. Oh, no. So, Tater looks like he's dominating mid at the moment. How, oh, however, foolishness. Right? Foolishness. He has a higher net worth than Taters at the moment. That's the Meepo life. That is the Meepo life. He being out. Looks like he's going to be poofing his Meepos back in. Although, an aggressive poison alien. So, Dyer is leading in last hits at the moment. With uh, Viper, Drow, and Sand King at the top of the charts here. Good on this Coddle uh, for not going down yet. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to stay alive as a simple, a simple man on a horse against uh, a, a literal king and a fire lady. Come on. He, he's but a man on a horse. Coddle does have one of the higher movement speeds in the game. He's I think on a horse. By Pugna. <laughs> he is on a horse. And here's Life the rotation just... from the Lena. Oh, here comes the rotation. Oh, Just a little flex. Coddle began to TP, but he had to cancel that, so that's now... On cooldown, just in case. Lena's not giving up here, though. She's going to stay middle. She's thinking about rapping. So here comes the Lena. The stun comes. Taters is going to put the beats on him, and Meepo's going to go down. Foolishness, unfortunately, overextending just a little bit. Sly now taking middle lane just to get a little bit of experience here. Okay, pulled the Wind Ranger in. They do get a ping on that side camp, so... Uh, Foolishness does know that it is warded and blocked. Uh, I think he's asking for stacks right now. Uh, also, the bounty runes are coming up, so it looks like they're going to start positioning on them. Especially bottom it looks with the like Viper. There's... He's got a haste. Oh, no. Oh, Sand King just missing that stun. Not quite getting the coddle. The Viper is here. He does have the haste. He's going to chase down. Hazard yet forward. Oh. Taters is hungry. Taters can smell the kill. He puts down the thing on the ground, and he's going to take him out. <laughs> Poor Hazard yet forward. I understand the life of a support, man. Oh. 
Taters might also oh. find his people here in the jungle. So up top, we got 100 me and a slice flexing on Parker. They're going to be able to put some damage on him. However, here comes Monster. He's going to drop the stun. Parker's going to turn. He's taking that kill. Monster with a good rotation there, getting the carry the kill. The Dazzle had to go down for it, but... Yeah, this is the advantage of the four-position Alina. Like, mm -hmm. you usually play her mid, and that's great. You do get a lot of last hits, but just the utility you get out of that stun and nuke just all over the map early game is just second to none. It looks like the Nake's going down to the Sand King solo in the bottom lane. Mm. I didn't Missed even that see action. It. Yeah, me too. It's been... The, all three <laughs> lanes are fighting. It's tough to keep track. So the Alina is going to stay up here with uh, Parker. Monster. Or Mots? Monster. It's like Monster with no N. It's Monster? Yeah. I'm making it too complicated. Matarastator. <laughs> the Sand King's just sitting down there. He's going to get his experience. The Alina does deem it okay to bail on him. They are running a pseudo tri lane up here now. Pressuring that uh, Earthshaker. Poor man. We're going to be looking for some action. Earthshaker oh. is super low. Part. Oh. oh, so he drops the Fisher to protect himself. Meepo's gone to jungle just to secure himself some farm so he can get a little fatter. Here comes Dazzle. He's going to try to ward up here, but he's going to run into three. Oh. This poor Dazzle, he's just going to try to walk away. He might go. Lucius oh. drops the net. He's going to just miss. A cap is either trying to kill himself on creeps. He's pulling all four of these heroes, making lots of space for his team. Unfortunately, he is going to go down. This is where you but he got space four. created. I need the chat wheel available right now so I can space create it. Wait, he got three, but it's four because Meepo. Oh, this is going to be confusing eventually. He pulled five heroes to the other side. So it's if we look Meepo. at last hits right now, uh, three of the uh, dire heroes are leading the pack. Sand King, Viper, and Drow all leading with Meepo first on the Radiant side. So uh, he's he's behind where he wants to be right now. Uh, he's getting a little bit distracted with these mid early game fights before he's got his items up. Triple Wraith mm -hmm. Band on him. Uh, so he's looking however to be able can, to tank However, you can never count a Meepo out. He'll disappear for a five minutes and come back with every item in the game. <laughs> every item in the game. And he wants your children. <laughs> and he's come to collect. He's, so we do have <laughs> we have three dire heroes just kind of chill in middle here. Uh, the Viper picking up some farm. Lena and Dazzle just around, just in case you need some backup. They're like the parents watching their kids at the playground for the first time. They're like, I want to let them be there, but I want to be so there. So a little bit of case. action bottom here. Only difference, wasted his bro strike. He does not have invisibility. The Lifestealer is just going to keep punching him. He's going to walk on him. Only difference might just be able to walk away here. However, Lifestealer does have better boots than he has. Oh, he's got the Nikes. He's got the Nikes. Uh, so the Sand King is going to be able to just walk away. Shrine is down, however, so he might have to send himself some regen. Ooh, he does action. have Veil of Discord up already. Top action going down. The supports are both fighting this Earthshaker. They're going to just walk away. Oh, Wind Ranger finds the Dazzle. Can we get a Shackle? The Wind Ranger runs up top, but they do see the Viper oh. there. The Shackle comes down. Here comes connected. the Power Shot. The Meeple's going to throw in, but the Viper puts his break on him. He's going to just keep punching him. Foolishness is in some danger here, but he's about to walk away. The other Meepo is still in there. They managed to wipe out the Viper. Foolishness now getting pinged by the Lena. Lena's going to pick it up. Sly's going to walk up here. Tap the Dazzle, but ultimately they're going to have to walk away. Both mids going down there, plus an Earthshaker. As this Drow is left alone top to just hit this tower. As well as the Life Stealer. He looks like he's going for Echo Saber, Echo Blade first. It's Saber. It's a Saber, isn't it? It sure is. <laughs> right you are, Jarvis. <laughs> All right. So the Meepo's going to farm out the triangle. Bottom looks like they're setting up for something. You do have Sand King, Lena. I love the Sync Cats banners all over the place. It really adds to the ambiance. This Team Tempest, it, uh, if you're watching this, you have to cut your banner in half, like horizontally, and put both the front and the back in the same image upload, and then you get the nice effect. Mm. So, tips here, the Sand King is chilling. They do have sight up that hill. That Dazzle secured it for them. We're going to secure two bounty runes each, it seems. <coughs> Looks like it went but two yeah. for two. Two for two. 
As the Wind Ranger does see the Drow top, she's going to follow a little bit, but Drow's going to be able to get away. Bottom looks like it's setting up for a fight here, however, as four of the Dire are wrapping around this tower. They know the Life Stealer's in there. Thanking, grabbing the creeps. Here comes Viper with that haste rune. Thanking starts to TP. He has rage, oh, and he's going to get out. No problem. So with all these Dire heroes down here, that's likely they're going to take this tower. However, Meepo is top, and he is a punching machine. It this looks like they're going to try here. T1s. Yep. Oh, but here come the TPs from Sick Cats. Lita's going to drop her stun. She's going to drop the Laguna Blade. There goes the poison. Foolishness looks like he's in trouble. He's going to go down, I think, to this tower. Absolutely. And there goes the shackle. But Taters ain't afraid. Taters is going to keep going. Oh, no. He takes a break. He's going to get these creeps <laughs> and push up. Maybe he's a little afraid. I don't know. To be fair, if everybody was as aggressive as I wanted them to be, they'd be feeding their whole team every time. Yeah. <laughs> That's what makes for a hype game. Constant <laughs> dying. So there's a removal of the sentry up there. The Dyer does have vision on the triangle uh, for the, where the Meepo has been farming. They've been able to do a lot of their movement based on that ward right here. Um, hmm. Sneaky position ward here. I like that a lot. Alright, so the Meepo one. does climb to the top of last hits here. They find Taters out. They're going to blind him into it. The Wind Ranger is going to hit her stun, but unfortunately, it might not be enough damage. Here comes Foolishness. Oh, and oh, there! The she, big here comes the Echo it. Slam. He drops it. Taters is in some trouble. The Meepo is going to get some revenge here as he's going to walk away. Woo! And that's a 3-1 swing for yeah. the Radiant side. Our boy 100 me must be feeling pretty good about the Echo. Want his team to fight. Easy peasy. Patience from <laughs> Patience 100 from me. Patience from Zoe on that one. So they're going to push into this T1, maybe finish the job that they started earlier. All the while, Parker is still farming. He's keeping up with the Meepo in last hits. Another TP in top. Bold move. Two TPs. All right. The Drow, or the Drow does get the silence off. The Dazzle is walking. Sly is going to win run away here. They're going to find the Earthshaker. 100 Me is in some trouble. However, the stun isn't there, but the ulti comes out. 100 Me is going to drop. They do see Hazard yet forward, but Coddle is one of the fastest heroes in the game, so he will get away. Here comes the push from the dire side. They want this T1. The life sealer is farming bottom. He's doing pretty okay for himself. He's almost got that echo saber. Radiance top tower is under attack. And all those range heroes just hit in that tower Radiance using the drow aura. Power of the drow aura. Beautiful shot. So much precision. So much precision. So they're at 13 minutes here. This might be the time for them to push. I just want to comment on the vision coming out from the dire side. You've got mm -hmm. nice vision down there, nice vision up there. Very aggressive vision, really allowing, enabling these like aggressive plays. They're trying to get on the Meepo, but they don't seem to be finding the right targets. It's right idea. Got to keep working. That poof is on value. Execution. Oh yeah, he's been managing. The so Meepo's to get gone out. for uh, four wraith bands here. I'm not yeah. a Meepo player, so I don't know if that's right or wrong, but it seems to be working for him. It's one more than I normally see, but I don't know what that tells me. <laughs> so, uh, the Dire with their vision is going to see the Meepo here. He's going to TPO, oh. and he's going to probably poof his boys. Dire has smoked coming in behind the T1. Oh, no, he's staying. They see him, oh. and Lena's going to drop that stun. Here comes the Sand King stun as well, and Meepo's just going to go down to that overwhelming magic damage as Life Sealer tries to just walk away. The Will-O-Wisp comes out, but unfortunately... Just not in time to save his friend, the Meepo. Life Sealer is hiding in that range creep. Oh lord, he hiding. They know. They know he's in there and they're going to wait. No, the Drow is going to go here. on 100 me top. Just another creep. Unfortunately, the vision they had on the high ground is not enough for Drow to pick up 100 me up top here. Bottom, it looks like there might be some action. His uh, Ashandarai successfully completes his ruse. <laughs> Nobody detected that he was in fact a creep the whole time. Oh, the Lena Sun is just gonna miss barely, but Sanking still goes in. They're gonna punch the pushes on him. There's the shackle and they're just gonna walk away. Sly's gonna wipe the wave. Fifteen minute runes are coming up. And Lena puts a lot of damage on that tower. One rune for one hundred me. 
Sing Cat's playing very aggressive and playing very well together. They're up 6k in net worth as well with the Drow leading in last hits. Okay, they're chasing Parker up top. Nope, they're gonna he's gonna get away. He's just walking. Yeah, XP That earned. Yasha paying off. <laughs> <laughs> XP earned and net worth both leading towards Sync Cats. Looks like a smoke in from the top lane. And they get the Burrow Strike off on the Life Stealer. The Laguna Blades used on him as well. He doesn't have Rage up. At this point, he might as well open wounds just turn around and hit, but he's not going to get to, as the magic damage is going to take him down again. Unfortunately, since you only have one voice and one set of eyes, at the same time, top lane, <laughs> they did the exact same thing and caught the Drow out of position. Mm. So, uh, very even trades there. Two smoke ganks, two kills, one going each way. Both on the ones. So Meepo does pick up a blink, making him extra deadly. He wants to fight now. He's ready to go. What's our shaker status on his blink? He has the money. He can afford that blink right now. They're going to look to turn this into a big team fight potential. So Meepo does see that Lena and the Dazzle are up here. He is positioned to go in if one of them decides to leave. But he's going to back off, go get farm elsewhere, it seems. Dyer does have vision exactly where Radiant have vision in their jungle. <laughs> well, everyone everyone knows what's there. It looks like they're going to chase down this Viper. Lifestealer is on him. The open wound's coming out. Lifestealer's going to start punching away. He does have the Echo Saber, but he's going to have to back off. Here comes Sand King just to protect his boy. A blink also up on Sand King, so... He thinks he's strong, too. Everyone thinks they're strong right now. They're going to be looking for a tussle. <laughs> and in truth, we are all strong. <laughs> we are all and strong. And will. Alright. As the teams are just kind of farming up here, and King is looking for something there bottom. We do have Dire starting to flex on top. Viper's coming in here to get some farm. He is and taking away that Radiant side jungle farm. And nobody is stopping him. Oh, oh no, and here comes Hazard. Right yeah, forward. Up. He has to drop the ulti to try to survive. The stun's going to come out and catch him. He's going to get Laguna Blade, unfortunately. As they de ward him and catch that support. Here comes Sly, though. He's going to get caught by the stun, but Lifestealer is in with the rage. He's going to start punching that Dazzle. They need to take him out. But here comes the Sand King with the big Epi chasing down their carry now, as well as chasing down 100 me up top. The oh, Meepo does come Meepo. down. And he helps out his dad. Now he's planning to pick up the Sand King just for fun. Sand King's going to Burrow Strike and just try to run away. His Blink is almost off cooldown. He oh. manages to hit it on time. Meepo's got two seconds on his. He's deciding to farm the Creeps. The Lifestealer does want more, though, as he goes in on Monster. And he's going to get that open wounds off on him. And here comes the stun, but his rage Easy is up. Rage. He is angry. And here comes Meepo to pick up Taters as he stayed around trying to hope and get something. And 100 Me is going to drop those stuns, which is going to make it really hard for Taters to finish off this Meepo. No blink on that Viper. He doesn't get the same easy out as Sand King does. Listen, they're playing Mando. Oh, and oh, and here comes the Sand King. He wants Foolishness. That Sandstorm is doing damage, and Foolishness is going to get out as the power shot comes in and takes out poor only difference. Now, that that was a bold play. It would have paid off had, had he traded his life for it. That Meepo is worth a fair amount of money right now. Listen, that's the guy I want in a fight against the Huns, okay? <laughs> So Parker's still farming up. He's going in for that forest staff, I think. Or does he have it already? Yes, he does have his Hurricane Pike. He's going to get Manta next, it seems. The Dazzle's going to see the Life Stealer here. Will they rotate on him? It's looking like maybe. All right, and there's the sight from the Radiant immediately <laughs> getting the ward. All right, so while both teams are farming, I'm just going to comment on the couriers real quick. We got a Juggernaut courier on the Dire side. I can't remember what it's called, but it looks like a Juggernaut. Then on the other side, they have a Squirrel, Puck, Butterfly, Squirrel. It's the best I can do. Which one's better? Hope, oh, the, oh. Yeah, here we go as the Earthshaker does drop that Echo Slab and catches the Viper and the Dazzle out. They're going to keep punching him as Lifestealer is not afraid at this point. They just man up on him. Lena tries to hide in the corner. The Power Shot is going to see her. 
Sly is looking for this Lena. He's looking for Monster. Monster's going to keep juking in. He might get out. Her TP is on cooldown for five more seconds. I think. It doesn't seem like they want him. I think she's gone. They're willing to let it go. Now, Monster just needs to TP you out. fight Drow mid? Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah, Drow getting the open wounds being placed on him. Her. Well, it's Parker, but her, I'm yeah. going to call you because you're Drow. Drow just going to keep farming. You know what? Working her way up those items. Looks like Foolishness going directly for the E-Blade, looking to just blow up his targets. Not a bad pickup. Um, Good disarm. Right now, they have no answer to like the uh, the Nakes Bomb Echo Slam until they get some BKBs up on uh, mm -hmm. on the side of on the side of Saint Cats. Only difference on the second, getting his way to a pipe. It looks like there's going to be some action top here as Parker is going to unload on this Meepo. The shackle does come out. Taters is there. He's going to drop the Viper Strike on him. He's going to break him, and Parker is still on it, dropping those sweet sweet arrows. Ooh, it really hurts when you lose your Meepo like that. He's got a 165 last hits. Parker, almost at 200 last hits. Let him get to this milestone. Life is going to push in mid here, but all these range heroes on the dire side are going to start taking towers with that precision they aura. Right now. The Sand King goes right in on that Earthshaker. Monster going to drop everything on him, hoping to take him out before he can drop the stun. Parker is going to take him out, though. And there's the silence. As the Dire Side is moving up on the Coddle here, Monster putting all his firepower onto him. One difference, not afraid. Gonna just back up as he is the tanky boy on the team. Good call to disengage uh, there. If you uh, if you lose that fight with any more people, they're gonna walk in for your T3, so. Absolutely. Tanking is such a spicy hero. He's, yeah, he's so strong. Um, and yeah, with the Shaker dead and no Echo Slam, they can take any fight they want. They really have to fight around the availability of Echo Slam. All right, so bold play on the Life Stealer, grabbing up a Shadow Blade. Not something I typically ever see on a Life Stealer, Are but you also I had a break on a Silver Oh, Edge? oh, oh boy, that's boy. scary. Ash is gonna just try to walk away here. Urshaker is gonna TP to make sure he's safe as the Dire Side kind of position. Only difference spots out Sly on middle lane, and Parker puts the silence on him, and here come those arrows. Only difference is punching him. Oh, there's the Laguna Blade to ensure the kill. The fight is going on right beside Tower, however, as the Echo Slam gets found on the Dazzle. Dazzle's going to walk away. Tater is going to put the poison on Ash and Dre, but he's just going to keep punching. Only difference, here comes the magic damage, as they're going to take him out. The Meepo is now in trouble, taking all of that ranged attacks. That precision aura doing work. Yeah, Life Stealer TPs in has to invis out. It really shines through on a four ranged hero team that all have solid auto attacks. Mm -hmm. oh, and in comes the Life Stealer trying fearless. to take the dazzle, but there's the shallow grave. Unfortunately, it was the ultimate bait. Yep, that shallow grave. He looks so delicious till you get in there. Look at that sand kick, just not caring, jumping in there. He's bold. He's got his hood up. He doesn't give a crap. Coddle loading up an Illuminate here. It's going to fly and hit Parker in the face, but it's not enough. Parker's pretty tanky at this point. That's one net. So, they don't want to follow it up. Sly's taking some serious hits from they're, this Drow. They're 90 seconds still on Echo Slam. They can't take anything big. Ooh, Hazard yet forward in a little bit of trouble. He's going to get away here. Only difference looking to get that kill. Only difference is just playing out of his mind with these like Blink Burrow strikes going super deep. He's playing with no fear, which he I can appreciate. No 100 me, though, also playing with no fear on the Earthshaker. So the Meepo's going to go bottom. Look for a little bit of farm here. They really do need to get one or two more items up on the Meepo to make him just a, like a wrecking ball. Get a pick. Easy smoke ganks. The team is super smoke gankable. You pick up the Dazzle with the stun and the fight's over. 100% Parker farming that camp. Not going to get found, though. The Viper finds another haste. This guy lives on haste. Yeah, I think he bought the haste DLC. Gaben just drops it in every two minutes directly into his bottle. <laughs> Viable purchase, Taters. <laughs> yeah, good purchase. Taters is going to TP bottom. He is all alone. The Radiant don't know he's here rooms. yet. They're, They're going to know haste. he's here now. Well, haste doesn't matter if you get netted. He hastes into the whole team. The nets are not fast oh. enough, though, to catch a hasted Viper. However, they will get the bounty room. Gonna be three bounties to the dire side. Sink cats 
Now 17k ahead. However, it is still anybody's game as you do got that Meepo and that Life Stealer. Yep, 17. You can evaporate 10k of that lead in a single team fight if you get a nice echo. Mm -hmm. Looks Meepo like just uh, trying to get that Ghost Scepter. Looks like the Shaker is going to be going for Aghanims. That's my guess. That could be a Yule Scepter, but uh, if I were him, I'd be picking up the Ags right now. Just get you that mobility so you can get on the back line, dazzle, and make sure he can't cast Grave. Honestly, I think the Earthshaker Aghanims is one of the best items in the one of the best eggs in the game. No doubt. It started out as a meme item, and now it's like you have to get it. Looks like Roshan's going to be taken by the Dire. So Sing Cats, get in this Roshan. I think Team Tempest do know what's happening. They got that inkling. They feel it in their cojones, but they know that they're a little bit behind. They got to get this Meepo with those items and. Um. They're taking the, the time to, to allow Nakes to get some space bottom. He's doing his farming. He's getting his items up. Mm -hmm. So there's the smoke. Unfortunately, they're not going to do with it anything with it now as the Aegis is on the Drow. Yes. You're telling... Uh... Oh, okay, so their only difference is gone on the Nakes. He's going to force him to use his Rage TP. And he's going to get out. Easy out. How's the next doing on items here? He has 2,000 gold. He doesn't have anything queued. Is that Mithril Hammer? Unclear. I like it when people. Or is it Deso? Could be. It could be Deso. Yep, there it is. Well called. Boom. So the Meepo is in the jungle here as Dire is rotating in. E Blade is up. Dazzle leading the charge bottom. So Meepo gonna get out with them sweet, sweet poofs. Our boy Dazzle. A, a Cab X. Skakab X2, unclear. Um, has four uh, wards on him right now, so once he gets those down, they're going to have a huge vision advantage. I think it's Akab X2, because SC is uh, some right. cats. You're right, right. My apologies. <laughs> As you should. Oh, um, there's the Yules. Here comes the stun. Unfortunately, the timing was a little bit off there for Monster. Sorry, I should have told you. <laughs> I didn't see it coming until it happened. <laughs> uh, happened. All right, so Dyer is positioning on this bottom T3. They want to make use of this Aegis. As they position here, the Drow almost 20, where she'll get that plus three Gust Silence Duration or the Evasion. Taters, no, he doesn't have uh, the Poison Effects building, so. Hazard, yet forward, gonna keep putting these Illuminates on the wave. Trying to clear it out here. Gonna heal it, and here comes the Drow. Just slow siege in the tower. Yep, not much you can do. Unless you want to commit a Blink Echo. She's gonna keep hitting the tower here. Sly is looking for the perfect Shackle. He's gonna drop a pretty good Shackle. Catch the Drow. Unfortunately, the carries are defending mid lane. There goes the tower, now they're up for the racks. Lifestealer oh, trying to rotate in behind. There is that sentry there. They do see him, and he's gonna get put up by Monster. And he's gonna get the rage off, and he goes straight for Parker as he tries to catch Ooh. the drop. Oh, the episode! Oh my gosh, that slam was huge, and they're gonna catch Taters. They melted the Lena, but here comes the epicenter from the Sand King. The Illuminate's gonna grab him. The Meepo is gonna go down. The Earthshaker did go down as well, as Lifestealer is gonna try to walk away with his Shadow Blade. Parker now moving into base, saying, There's nothing you can do against me. I still have this Aegis, I still have these arrows. I have a <laughs> quiver. Literally, a quiver. So Parker's going to keep hitting it. Here's the blind. However, he's going to Manta out of it. And there's the fort. Sly tries to get only difference, but only difference is now just going to flex. He's saying, look, I'm tanky. However, how tanky is he? As he gets open wounds, and Ashed Ray is going to get in there. And the Dyer are just going to leave with their racks. They're saying, hey, we're done. We'll come back later. Team Tempest in a little bit of a tricky spot. However, you can definitely come back from this. All it takes is one really good team fight. We have a four staff up now on our uh, Earthshaker. That was a really good Echo Slam. Unfortunately, they didn't pick up the Sand King in it, which allowed him to come back in with the Epicenter. Mm -hmm. The net worth lead yeah, has uh, gone up to 19k. So uh, it's wavering a bit. It's not going, it's not increasing as quickly as it was. Oh, and they're going to catch the Earthshaker up top. Dropping everything on him to drop him down as they start pushing in here. They catch the Lifestealer out middle. And uh, Ashendray either has to TP. Oh. 
or guess, become a creep. Guess who has haste again? <laughs> Taters, where are you getting these hastes from, man? Me, man? He's got the he's got, got the a connect. control. We need to look into this. We like Dota. I want to look into Taters like, and his haste. Yeah, he's roots. doping. We need some uh, official testing. <laughs> so Parker is gonna go up here. He's gonna get the solar crest put on her as she hits the tower here. Strau is not gonna use the manta yet. She knows that there's still maybe a fight. Blinding light. Do this work. Drow does have a BKB. They're gonna find Ash and Ray out. Only difference tries to get him there. Drow Ranger is hit by the net, and Sly tries to put damage on. Sly is gonna have to run away. They're gonna keep hitting racks here. The Radiant need to do something to get him off it, but unfortunately, it is way too hard to get on this line. As the Sand King just waiting for that counter initiation with the epicenter. Good shackle from Sly. Here comes the epicenter. Sand King's gonna try to get in there. Unfortunately, he doesn't catch anybody. This might be an overextension. Oh, the Meepo does go in. The BKB does come up. The Meepo's trying to take out that Sand King. There's the Echo Slam. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it does that damage. The Lina is going to go down. They're starting to put the beats on the Sand King and the Viper. Viper standing in that goo, which is making it harder for Meepo to get those hits that he needs with Geo Strike or Ransack. The old Han terms coming back to haunt us. <laughs> Our thousands of hours playing Han. The Meepo does get by, uh, does come back here. The Sand King does get put on him, and Drow's going to use those sweet, sweet arrows, ignoring all that armor, and that's going to be GG, ladies and gentlemen. What a game one! Wow, great game. Um, yeah, they uh, they got on the Meepo when they needed to. Meepo fought, and uh, he took a few mid-game fights where, unfortunately, he he didn't make it through, and they used that momentum to just keep fighting, especially with that precision aura, so strong. 100%. You know what? But if I'm Team Tempest, I'm now raring to go. I'm raring to hit those timings and take advantage of this next game. Uh, looking at the chart here, if we're still streaming, my support Where? of the game will go to a cab. It has to. You know what? He bought two k or 2500 worth of uh, support items. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of centuries. Yeah. Honorable mentions does go to Hazard yet forward, Sly and Monster. Uh, however, a cab is the next level on that supporting this time. And props to your three, the Sand King, for actually picking up some supporting items. Well done. Instead 100%. of expecting all your supports to do it for you. Good stuff. <laughs> if you can't tell, we both play support. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess they're going to take a little bit of a break here. Yeah, it's looking like we're going to get a little bit of a break. So uh, we will be back with you shortly when the next draft starts. Adios. See you soon. Step lively now. Your Admiral is on board. Two to the one, two the one, two the three. I'll take that. Battle fury. Tide hunter. Rot in the sun. Damn. I thought this bottle would have rum. Three to the one, two the one, two the three. True peace is only at sea. All ship shape from stern to scupper. Tide hunter. You're not like another. Sweetly, sweetly blew the breeze. On me alone it blew. I'll take that. Hand it over. Ah, deny. No goal for you. Tide Hunter, you left too soon. To the deeps with you. Blow with the fool. High thee to battle. I dub thee. I scepter. Ramming speed. If the demons of the cataract couldn't see my fleet, then this lot doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> I haven't seen such a pack of tree weasels since we roused in the trembling isles free of all the tree weasels. Look sharp. Splay that booty out. Splay that booty out. Yes. Splay that booty out. 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 Belay that last order. <laughs> I'll save this for another day. Bootylicious. Step lively now. Your admiral is on board. Ha! Two to the one, two to the one, two to the three. I'll take that. Battle fury. Tide hunter. Rot in the sun. Damn. I thought this bottle would have rum. Three to the one, two to the one, two to the three. True peace is only at sea. All ship shape from stern to scupper. Tide hunter. You're not like another. Sweetly, sweetly blew the breeze. On me alone it blew. 
I'll take that. Hand it over. Deny. No goal for you. Tide Hunter. You left too soon. To the deeps with you. Blow with the fool. High beat to battle. I dub beat. I scepter. Ramming speed. If the demons of the cataract couldn't sink my fleet, then this lot doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> I haven't seen such a pack of tree weasels since we rousted the Trembling Isles free of all the tree weasels. Look sharp, splayed that booty out, 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 splayed that booty out. Delay that last order. <laughs> I'll save this for another day. Bootylicious. Step lively now. Your admiral is on board. Ha! Two to the one, two the one, two the three. I'll take that. Battle fury. Tide hunter. Rot in the sun. Damn. I thought this bottle would have rum. Three to the one, two the one, two the three. True peace is only at sea. Off ship shape from stern to scupper. Tide hunter. You're not like another. Sweetly, sweetly blew the breeze. On me alone it blew. I'll take that. Hand it over. Deny. No goal for you. Tide Hunter, you left too soon. To the deeps with you. Blow with the fool. High beat to battle. I dub beat. I scepter. Ramming speed. If the demons of the cataract couldn't sink my fleet, then this lot doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> I haven't seen such a pack of tree weasels since we rousted the Trembling Isles free of all the tree weasels. Look sharp, splayed. Go. All right, and welcome to game two of St. Cats versus Team Tempest. Eh? All right, uh, of course, I'm here. Juvu and Steamed Hams is with me. I'm excited to get into game two. What are you looking for in this game, sir? Oof. Well, I'm gonna, I really want to see if they want to pick that Meepo again. I really want to see it again. I think he did a great job. I think he just needed a bit more time to, to like realize his potential before fighting. So I really hope they pick it again. I really want to see that. I'm expecting a Sand King ban. If I'm being honest, uh, that Sand King ran away with the game. He did a great job. Alright, so the Night Soccer is banned out. The Trent Protector is also Same banned bands. out. Same bands. We are watching another replay. Um, it looks like they've got the same bands. Last time, yep. If we see a Techies ban, we'll know for sure. Watch Team Tempest <laughs> ban out Sand King or Shaker. Try it again. I'm down. <laughs> yeah, ban out the Sand King. He did so much work for them last game. Mm -hmm. Who, uh, on the Sand King was only difference? Yeah, that boy manned up hard. Yeah, he went... Like He clearly knows the limits of the hero with the with the hood on it, because he did plays that I was like, I would die if I tried that. But uh, he pulled <laughs> it out. Died a few times doing it, but for the most part, really made space for his team and made action happen. So the Respect Sand King ban and Marana ban. Uh, honestly, I also want to give a shout out real quick to 100 me on the Earthshaker that last game too. There were yeah. some hard echoes. Some oof, some big echoes. Some oofs. <laughs> Alright, so we got a Respect ban on the Sand King. The Marana ban comes out because Marana's just annoying in general. Magnus ban also coming out. Magnus is an interesting hero. He's one of those ones that's a little weak in the early game. But when he ramps up, he's, like, huge value for his team. Yeah. Uh, I really like the hero, but you really need to be able to hit your skewers. And if you don't, then he's just kind of half a hero. If you if you whiff, like, 50% of your skewers, that's what differentiates, like, a really good Magnus player from just, like, an offlane player who can pick up Magnus. Like, it's true. I can play Magnus, but... Those like clutch skewers, like the uphill skewers, like the cliff skewers, like those are the ridiculously hard but value ones. Oh yeah. All right, so their third band, they're talking about it a little bit here. Do you? So I, I've thought about this a lot. Do you think you should draft uh, always just according to what you want to do, or do you think you should draft in reaction to what your opponent is doing? So. 
Um, I obviously it kind of depends on your like MMR level, and at a certain level and up to a certain point, you need to just draft what your team is comfortable playing. Because at the end of the day, it's about how you feel in the game. The mental game plays such a large part, and if you feel uncomfortable in a hero, then that's just going to be more detrimental than a slightly better hero would have been, you know? Or a slightly more 100%. comfortable hero would have been. But obviously, once you expand your hero pool to cover like every offlane character, if you're an offlane player, then you can start banning a bit more reactionarily. Mm -hmm. So there's the Crystal Maiden pick. Uh, yeah, so I totally agree. I find that, however, we win our games when we go with the plan we want to do, as opposed to just constantly reacting. If yeah. we're always like, oh, here it comes. Okay, pick another counter. Yeah. Oh, they, they got an alchemist. we got to pick up Ancient Apparition, even though we've already got two supports or something like that. Yeah, I know what you mm -hmm. mean. Um, yeah, so Dazzle Ban, good ban. Good ban from uh, Team Tempest. That Dazzle, <laughs> that Dazzle unsung hero. Although we, we sung him pretty like often, um, like definitely a hero of the game. Uh, managed to staying on the very edges and just casting those shallow graves. Really stopped Ashandarai's life lifestealer last game from closing out a lot of the kills that he was trying to get. Absolutely. I I don't know if I would have actually banned out the Dazzle here as. Oh wait, no, sorry. Yes, I would have banned out the Dazzle. My bad. I thought they picked CM and then they got a ban for some reason. Ah uh, yeah. Uh, but banning out the Dazzle was the right move here. Picking up CM is not bad on St. Cat's parts. Uh, I think she's a decently well-rounded hero. Uh, however, she is so, a squishy lady. If you're a... Oh, the first pick, Pudge. I love it. Where is he going? Is he in the offlane? Is he a mid-Pudge? Who, who is, is it, he? Is it pause one, Pudge? Is this a new meta? Echo Saber I mean, Medallion? position two, Pudge. So. This, he, he banged. <laughs> All right. So if you so, are, <laughs> if you are, um, Team Tempest right now, and you're doing reactionary bans based on what you see, who are you reactionarily banning for this like CM aura, or just good CM combos? Uh, you get rid of the storm again. I would dump Juggernaut because the CM jug lane is super annoying. Pretty spicy. I'm trying to really think. Uh, geez, reactionary ban for a CM lane. Yeah, you think about the lane. I guess you think about the lane as opposed to thinking about like just the whole game. I mean, maybe I you ban the bristle too, just for the for the annoying uh, mana region. Grimstroke, second mm -hmm. pickup. Uh, would you? Can you remind me? Do you know the interaction between uh, Devour and uh, or Dismember and Grimstroke Alt? Does that interact correctly, or does it not work? It does interact correctly. It it, dev it dismembers both of them. Okay, that's that's pretty amazing then. Um, yeah, I always forget, just because there's a few things that don't quite work, so I always forget exactly which ones they are. Yeah, uh, personally, I am a Grimstroke spammer. I think I've played him like three times, maybe four times already in this uh, league. Ooh. I love him. Uh, the Witch Doctor pickup, good pickup uh, by Sync Cats. Those are just two classic strong laning supports that generally can flex pretty hard in the lane and se secure the lanes that they're in. So we're probably gonna, I'm gonna guess that we're gonna see a dual lanes coming out from uh, from Sync Cats. We're gonna pick those two really like like lane presency supports. Hundred percent. Uh, I'd love to see a first blood attempt for both teams at this point. Man, it is terrifying uh, how strong Maledict is at level one. If you have a three man crew running at somebody, <laughs> it's true. Wait for it. Wait for it. He's about Life to pop. So, uh, I don't, I don't, you know what, maybe I shouldn't speak on this because I really don't like Lifestealer on my team, on the other team. I think that like, he's a pretty weak hero right now, in my opinion. However, it's interesting that they banned him out as they, they, they dealt with him uh, in the first game. I, I agree. Like, the Lifestealer had some really good plays, but they were, man they were managing to take care of him with just the kiting available from Viper and Drow. All right, uh, so the Lifestealer ban, the Tide ban. Uh, always a good ban. Tide is just an all-around one of my favorite great heroes. Guy. He's it's pretty difficult to knock him out of the lane. Um, as a solo off laner, he can handle himself against two people. So good ban. That could that could tell us that they're going to be going aggressive in the off lane, like in their own uh, in their in their own safe lane against the enemy off laner if they they want to ban out those really beefy off laners. Mm -hmm. So we might see a try lane out of a out of Team Tempest, but. Uh, I am, I'm just pulling things out of my ass. We'll, we'll see what we see <laughs> when it happens. That's fine. So the Legion Commander banned out, as well as Enchantress. 
All, a lot of offlane bands. A lot of offlane bands. Yeah, a lot of offlane bands. Why can't I find? I'm, try, I'm trying to find uh, how Grimstroke's ultimate reacts to hook. I'm assuming it breaks it. That is a good question. I am unclear on the interaction. Hey, Clockwork. Oh, I love it. I love Clockwork. I love that he got buffed in 722G, and I hope that he comes back to the game because he is so much fun to play. He is literally one of my... He's definitely a high-action hero. Oh, I just found it. Okay, so Punch Hook does break the bond. It, it, it will disassemble the bond if you bring him far enough. Understood. Yeah, it'll snap that chain. He can break these uh, cuffs. So, is, so Clockwork's probably the four, or perhaps the three. That's hard to say. I think that's going to be a roaming pudge, a four pudge roaming around the map, hooking, hooking around the world while the Clockwork gets his level six in the lane. That's my guess, my prediction. There's the Juggernaut. That, what? Nobody listens to me. I say you ban the You're Juggernaut. Genius. You have your reactionary ban the Juggernaut. You see that, Sam? That's a <laughs> that's a dirty lane. That is a filthy I mean, lane. However, that is showing their one uh, yeah. with two picks left on Team Tempese. <sighs> team Tempese. Team Tempese. Team um, Tempese. Also, fun fact about Grimstroke because I know too much about him. A force staff can break uh, the chain as well if you force them away from each other. No real obvious four staff builders on uh, on the time on the side of Sync Cats yet, but uh, I mean any of those supports could pick it up. Just pretty non-standard for them. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking for the fourth pick here from Team Tempest A. I'm thinking if they have an Invoker player, they grab Invoker, either last pick or right here. I would love an Invoker so pick up here. Grab. The cold snap, the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, specifically cold snap. And it's just so good with Pudge. All right, so they're thinking... They only have 10 seconds left in reserve time. Uh, <laughs> Slark! Slarky malarkey. Fun fact, uh, we once played a game with Sir Action Slacks doing the Slark voice. Uh, yeah, we lost horribly. Oh, like on his team. Uh, which is unsurprising, because he was not very good at Slark. He was memeing very hard. He was memeing very hard. This is like, <laughs> so I like five years ago. I, I, it's true. I like the Slark here. Uh, so, he, Witch Doctor can't cast what he can't see. Juggernaut can't Omni Slash what he can't see. So... Mark is pretty spicy here. How can Omni Slash be real if our eyes aren't real? <laughs> How can Jug be Gaben's favorite hero if he can't kill Slark? You're right. He needs a buff. They all need buffs. Alright, so we're looking for the fourth pick here on Sync Cats. It's likely they're picking their three and their two coming up here. I don't even know what you grab. Uh, let me think here. Let me think. I would try to pick a like I'd run this jug in a tri lane and just ruin whatever lane I'm up against. Pick a strong solo off laner like Centaur, uh, and then pick your mid. Uh, I would have. Uh, you could do Timber Saw or something like that too. Timber Saw would be a pretty good pickup for the Pudge Clockwork combo. You can get out of the cogs. Mm -hmm. You can get out of the hooks. But uh, Centaur also good. You get the Stampede and you get the the nice cliff walking once you get Agonims. Mm -hmm. Centaur can also affect Slark while he's in his ultimate. At every hit, Slark does take Agi off him, but he also takes that strength damage from Centaur. Does take that return. Return proving to be ridiculously strong since they reworked it. Uh, so we'll have to see if Centaur walks up and takes the tower hits to build the return stacks, the super high level meta play. Honestly, I think that is one of the best reworks in the game, uh, other than Wraith King. The skeletons? Uh, it just adds more to the hero, right? Final ban, uh, OD. OD, OD ban on Team Tempest. Yeah, a rock solid mid laner that can control the tempo of the game once it gets a single item out of mid. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty big fighting lineups coming up from both teams again. No like real late game, uh, late game builds. We haven't seen Spectre in the series. We haven't seen any Anti Mage or Alchemist. I mean, Alchemist has been essentially deleted from the game. Uh, so I don't expect to see him anywhere, but you know the other the other long, long fighting, long farming heroes. They're using up their reserve time here on this last ban. 
I'm spooked out by reserve time because uh, the last game we played, the enemy <laughs> team ran out of reserve time and randomed a hero that was not good for their draft. Yeah, I know, feel horrible. About I, I feel a bit bad when we were theory crafting in the, in the draft. Like, what are they going to pick here? And then they picked an ogre, and we were very confused. And it turns out that that was unfortunately a random uh, due to the, the fact that they ran out of reserve time. So, so fun the fact ogre is banned out. <laughs> Sorry. When you run out, when you run out of reserve time, it just randoms for you. It doesn't do random whatever you were. Possible. It doesn't do whatever you were highlighting. It just it just randoms. So lesson learned by uh, <laughs> by one team. Hopefully nobody else has to learn it. Uh, so the invoker is banned out. You did call. Yep, that's a good that's there. a good ban. Invokers. I don't know if Team Tempest has an invoker player, but I don't really like. It doesn't matter. Like Tornado Amp with Grimstroke and Pudge behind it is like so strong. They have so much like AOE line damage. Mm-hmm. So we need a mid on the side of St. Cats. Uh, they can't pick OD, I mean, obviously. Um, who do you pick to round this lineup out? They picked a Viper last game. Um, visage. The Visage. The face. Here is it. <laughs> Our boy Visage, back in the game. Uh, I haven't oh, seen so him in a long time. I haven't seen him in a long time, but uh, that's super exciting. Adds more stuns to a team that, a team that already has a ton of stuns. Uh, and adds even more catch with the uh, gra was it Grave Chill, the uh, the movement speed steal. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to be a, a scary team uh, that's going to run you down whenever Centaur Alt is up or whenever Visage is near you. Um, that said, the uh, the Team Tempest side has ability to disengage with the Cogs, with a slur Oh, and a Riff. Is that... That's a what, where is that Ricky going? Okay, Pause. That's a mid pudge. That's a mid pudge. It's got to be. Money on that's a mid pudge. No, no he, it's not. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Ashonda Rai was their one player last game. Um, foolishness. Foolishness was their, was their meepo player mid. It's possible we're swapping up roles here. We'll see. Yeah, so we got uh, Taters this time on the Centaur. Arc is still on Jug. Only difference is on the Visage. Cobb and Monsters still rocking those supports. So I think our core players might be shuffling up here. Looks like they're going to be going to different places. Yeah, this is in. I'd love to see a mid Ricky, not going to lie. Um, it's pretty strong because he gets that backstab uh, on, like, it really helps him secure last hits on the range creeps in mid lane. I'm, I'm excited. This is going to be a spicy game with lots and lots of action. That Ricky's going to be a menace. That Visage is just going to take off with those uh, wonderful little... With the birds. Familiars? They're called the familiars, familiars yeah. The pigeons. <laughs> the things that really hurt me quickly, and then when I try to kill them, stun me and piss me off. Yes. That's, that's what I like to <laughs> the unkillable about. rock birds. <laughs> oh, here we see the nice glitch of the Crystal Maiden dog just coming oh. to the forefront. <laughs> and you've just got uh, like the OD having a or the uh, the visage having a crystal maiden dog. I love that. Nice Ricky skin right. on foolishness, by the way. I think that one's pretty expensive. Uh, so uh, here we go into game two. Uh, we're setting up lames here. Monster on the CM. Taters taking up that Suntar, taking him off lane. Parker and Ikab are going to work together. Jug Witch Doctor combo. And only difference is going to take that Visage middle. Uh, on the dire side, starting with the off lane, we got Sly and 100 Me going to be that off lane. So we're looking at a three clockwork with that Grim Stoke. Grim Stroke. Foolishness is going mid with the Ricky. Uh, and a Chandre and Hazard yet forward are going to go top with a Pudge as a five. Interesting. Bold moves, bold moves. Bold moves. That's uh. Now? I'm kind of scared for this Pudge uh, oh. trying to support this uh, Slarky Malarkey. Oh, they asked about the pizza slice in chat. God, I want pizza, but it's almost midnight over here, and that would not be appropriate. It is midnight. If you come come over to Vancouver, you could have a nice piece of nine o'clock <sighs> pizza. So we're getting a wrap here from 100 Me and Sly. Sly's got ink swell. 100 Me does have the cogs. They're looking, but Juggernaut's not the guy. They're looking for Witch Doctor. A they're bit just of gonna set up camp. Up. Top, it looks like they're not even going to try to contest. As there are three. Bottom's where the action's going to be. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. These Radiant are going to take <gasps> all three. The Sink Cats. Oh, they, However, they're going to... is looking for first blood. A Cobb's going to try to walk away, but those cogs are too strong. The Clockwork needs to punch him, and there it is. 
Now, normally There's you need to wait to for tempest. level 2 assault battery to pull that off, but unfortunately, uh, the Witch Doctor was on his own. He had the backup of the uh, the Grimstroke there. Easy kill. Yeah, the Dyer are going to block that easy camp down bottom. They don't want any pulling going on. Top is going to be an interesting part. Ashare is looking a Shandri. A sh Shandare. Shandare is looking for the hook. He almost gets taters. It's going to be hard for Pudge to support in this lane. I could be proven wrong. However, Pudge has no armor notoriously. Yeah, if he's... Taters gets those charges, he's going to punch. Yeah, and the Crystal Maiden, although she doesn't hit oh. for that much against no armor. Autumn, Autumn had some action, but both teams going to walk away. Sly taking a little bit more damage than the Radiant side. Ricky bid's interesting. He just sits there in Viz and waits for those last hits. So it's I was wrong about my lanes. They put the Witch Doctor with the uh, with the Jug. I would have put the CM personally. I mean, obviously, Cask is super strong. Hook coming in top on Taters. All right, Taters is probably just going to walk away. He is leashed. Uh, however, that Slark is going to start punching. Slark took leash first. Uh, it may have been worth to get Eshin's ship, but he's just trying to hold him underneath that tower. Unfortunately, Centaur now has eight charges on that reactive... Goodness. Retaliate. Monster putting the beats on him here. Foolishness. Trade in middle. Fly in 100 me. Want to get some fights going in, but Jug with that spin is real hard to get on. No doubt. To state the obvious. Uh, Jug and Visage at 8 last hits apiece. Uh... They're pinging on Ashandri. Ashandre. They're pinging the Pudge. Taters is going to hit him. He's going to pop Retaliate. And here's where having no armor, unfortunately, does not come in handy. Tries As to Taters get is going to just keep punching. Leap out. He, tr he tried to stay in front of that Slark there so he would end up getting leashed. But unfortunately, the Slark was just too fast. Get forward, making moves. Are we going to see a hook coming in? He's positioning for it. He's going to hit it. Taters is now under tower. The tower's going off, but Taters, he eats his way through the trees and gets away. But he's Stark taking some damage. To him. He's mostly out of regen. Three mangoes remaining, though. Well, the Ricky does go to the top of the last hits charts here as he is securing himself some goodness. Bottom, it's looking like they might want to fight. They're just dancing around this camp. 100 meters is going to get cast, but now that the cask is down. Oh, no, he's going to bail. I don't think so. Ricky is being punched mid. Pudge is going to try to rotate, try to start something here. He is smoked up. Unfortunately, the visage is going to see him. He's going to get that range creep instead of the visage. Nice try, though. And at bottom, Akab is getting grabbed by 100 me. There's the ink swell. The cog's going off. Sly walks away so he doesn't pass off that cask. And 100 me's going to pick up a kill on their support. Looks like Pudge made his way back top to try to support the Slark in lane. Let's see how the Slark's holding up here for last hits. He's doing... Slark's getting beaten down. Yeah. He's going to hop away. Yeah, he's being pressured quite hard by this aggressive offlane coming out from uh, from uh, Sync Cats here. Arker doing a little bit better than Slark on the Juggernaut with last hits. However, the Slark is in a tricky lane and he's still securing some goodness for himself. Oh, the Pudge is just sitting there. He wants to get Monster. See if Monster shows herself. Pudge is going to send oh. the hook. They're going to grab the CM. There's the leash. Trees, but it doesn't matter. The leash is going to happen. He's going to go down to the rot. Taters, however, is like, I'll fight you. Hazard's going to get away here. He's coming around the corner. Taters is going to switch targets. And Hazard's just going to go back to farming. This lane really needed that on the side of Team Tempest. They needed something to swing in their favor. Or it was just going to start snowballing. That hook really puts them back in the lane. Absolutely. Was mid Ricky pretty phenomenal? Oh, he, a good time. he didn't even get the invis rune. <laughs> Why, you know... Uh, here come the five minute runes. Fudge might be in a little bit of trouble here. He's going to go and get the other one. Is that out? Or he's going to hook Taters away. Chase after him. You might want to turn around. If Nobody's I... got it in the bounty room on the radiant side. Chandri's in a little bit of trouble here. 
As Taters is going to keep walking on. There goes the stun. He's going to get those punches in. He's going to get the double edge. Using the tree. What a juke. Oh, my. As he's going to get under tower and be completely safe. Gotta love a man who dances around trees. Uh, down bottom, the clockwork nearly went down to a maledict uh, spin combo coming out from the side of uh, Syncats, but uh, he manages to make it away just by the skin of his teeth. Ricky Middle is definitely an interesting choice. He does have that passive regen from Cloak and Dagger. I always forget that that gives regen. It's uh... mm. Seems out of place. But Seems out of place. We'll Cloak the and Dagger. Is going out on the Grimstroke. There's the Maledic. Here's the spin from Parker. The Inkswell is going to go off, but unfortunately, Juggernaut don't care. And they're going to end up picking up Sly. However, Parker does get grabbed. The Healing Ward is doing work, but it gets taken out 100 me picking up the carry. And he's going to move towards the Cobb here, but it ain't happening. The Dire Tower here starting to take some damage from these familiars. Ricky's unable to immediately take them down. Yeah, he he can't really take those familiars though. He needs the help of his team. Um, and here comes Crystal Maiden. Speak of the devil. Does she have reveal? She oh, does. Oh, here have comes dust. the grave chill. They're going on foolishness. He's going to cloak and dagger, but that only keeps you safe for so long. And Crystal Maiden's going to come with that haste. She's going to grab him where it was once Tater's Domain. It is now Monster using it to her advantage. And they're going to take out foolishness, perhaps. He's really low. He's under his under tower. The dust was about to run out, but 100 me comes in for the Visage. The Visage and the Crystal Maiden doing a lot of damage, however. Visage soaking up all that damage from 100 me. And Monster's going to get caught out here as the Chandra's going to come around. Only difference going to TP out. And good, he escapes. Good play by the Visage to disengage from that. Really a good attempted hook from Ashandre trying to pick up the Visage with that TP in. Unfortunately, she just didn't go that way. Bad luck. Hmm. Now the Slark face for, faces off against Taters here on the Centaur top. Both just fighting for the lane. Slark has a little bit of a hard time with Centaur until he gets six. And then it becomes more of a Slark show if the Centaur is by himself. Sly's going to soak up some XP mid till Foolishness shows up. Good stuff, good stuff. Jug's doing pretty well. He's about to get his uh, phase boots. And Sly comes top to help defend his boy. Hazard yet forwards. So this ain't, this game is going back and forth. It's pretty We're, close uh, at the moment. Lots of fighting. Yeah, it's been swinging a little bit back and forth in the favor currently of Sync Cats. Uh, last hit chart right now. Juggernaut and Centaur are leading with uh, Ricky uh, just close behind. Unfortunately, the uh, the Slark uh, proving that the lane proving to be difficult. It doesn't quite have the farm. Uh, Juggernaut has twice the last hits he does right now. They need to put some more. Top. Uh, foolishness, putting it on Monster. Ashandre is just going to be there to put the rod on him. Taters is going to try to walk away. Ashandre and the Foolishness seem to have two different ideas, but they're managing the hook. And there goes the Inkswell. Foolishness is going to take him down. Sly putting that Inkswell on there and hitting his uh, stroke of fate. Nice. It always feels good to hit that on a running away hero. Probably my favorite skill because canceling it is really easy. So you just, you just flex in it. Keep readjusting. Only difference, almost dying mid to the uh, to the uh, uh, Ricky Tricks of the Trade. I hate that the name of that ability so much. <laughs> tricks of the Trade. So Tater and Monster are up here. I think they do know. No, it's nighttime. They don't know that it's uh, all three. They just know it's two. So Chandra gets in his favorite position to try to do some dealios. Ricky going for Diffusal Blade first. The Clockwork almost has a four staff. Maybe some movement on this Ricky. No. They're looking to fight. Slark ain't afraid. He's going to just jump away. Chandra does not have the mana for a hook at the moment. Like he's going to rotate elsewhere. As 10 minutes is coming up here. I'm sure he's just going to see that centaur. He's going to try to stand here and hope to get the bounty and walk away with his life. Run the so. Bottom, there is fighting. The Juggernaut is going to go down here to Tricks of the Trade as well as the Clockwork Cogs. 
And mines. And, oh, yeah, Cox. They're salt. gonna get the counter kill from the Malik. Witch Doctor puts it on 100, and as he TPs out, Oof. oh, it's gonna tick finally. He's gonna go down. <laughs> he uh, his body sunk ceremonious ceremoniously into the flag in the fountain. <laughs> into the baths. Yeah. All right, so we do have Visage top with the CM. They pushed over middle already, and they're going to try to make use of this timing to try to take another one. Like I've been saying to my team, every at 10 minutes, laning stage is over. We need to fight. It's time that to looks go. Like, yeah, it looks like Sync Cats is going to try to do the best they can here. Sly and Hazard forward. Don't really want to let this go. They're waiting for their team. Clockworks TP is down. Foolishness does not have one, so they're going to have to just wait for them to walk up. But Grimstroke does have that stroke of fate. Looking dire for the Dyer's Tower. Team Tempest A setting up here. There's the Ink Swell on the Slark. He's going to try to keep oh. up. He's going to stun the Centaur and the CM. Centaur is going to pop his ulti as Slark wants to catch the CM. Ash Andre is going to eat up that Centaur. And they're going to find the CM here. Slark is still looking for a monster, doing some mad jukes. But she is going to go down as the Visage just runs out the back. He says, you know what, I got the tower, I can go home. The Juggernaut does take their T1 par bottom. Parker doing his thing, getting his farm. The Dire don't look like they're done. Oh, they see cogs. the Visage, the Cogs, and the... Battery Assault going off here. Ashadra is going to get 100 V out of there. He does have the four Staff. He's going to go up, but those birds are going to keep following. Keep putting those little planks on him as he's going to try to reach the fountain. Outreaches his hand, but unfortunately the Visage takes him out with the Soul Assumption. I didn't know the name of that skill till just now. <laughs> the damage one. <laughs> the one that I don't get. Actually, I'm going to do some reading. I need to educate myself. Parker pushing this T2 over, actually. Making huge so, use of all that space. In the downtime we have now, you mentioned earlier that at 10 minutes, laning stage is over. What do you mean by that? Is that the optimal timing? Like, how does that work? Um, so, I was listening to... Oh, who was it? I want to say it was no... Oh, it was Purge, I believe. I want to say Purge. Uh, and so, most teams uh, in a certain bracket will start fighting around 10 minutes. Uh, higher brackets, Immortals, usually 6 minutes. As your lanes are going to start to break down eventually anyways, and you want to start picking off their big players. So the Juggernaut, the Visage in this game. And make use of your heroes that scale super well. Because your supports aren't going to be viable forever. The Crystal Maiden is going to use an ulti on the Slark here. Foolishness is going to come in and try to pick up the Witch Doctor in exchange. There's the Tricks of the Trade. He's going to try to wait out the Dust of Appearance. Here are the birds. Birds are here. There's the ulti. The birds are going to start stunning. And unfortunately for Foolishness, he's going to go down. T Taters did not want to leave that up to chance and blew uh, the uh, the Stampede for that. And I, I would have done the same thing with a Ricky that's worth that much money with a five times kill streak. Yeah, you secured that kill with with the Stampede. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so back to... So I'm definitely not a pro in any sense at all. Uh, I was 4K before, now I'm, I've been kicked down to the 3.7 but you want to make use of timings and timings is something that's been said a lot especially at uh this last ti uh, and at 10 minutes your supports are going to start spiking uh in magical damage not in items but a cm ulti right now will melt a carry so you want to start moving around and making use of all your sweet stuns it's interesting that at the lower brackets this timing happens later in the game people spend longer time laning and then less time mm -hmm. fighting so if you want to play like an immortal, break your laning phase early. Get out of your lane. Get out yeah. of your lane. Lanes are just like a social construct, man. <laughs> yeah, no. Also, yeah, and as soon as you start shaking stuff up, like if you're the first one to start leaving lane and making those rotations of four heroes bottom, you have the advantage of surprise to catch that carry and that support out if they're not leaving laning phase. So that is two kills you can definitely probably secure, which will force more rotations from the enemy team and make them react. <clears throat> you want to yeah. be the ones initiating those sweet fights. We can see Juggernaut's farm is taken off now. He's at 104 last hits. Let's check 
what he's got item wise. Nice uh, bounty rune hook from the Pudge. Uh, yeah, Juggernaut's got his Yasha. He's going Ma Maelstrom next. Yeah, he's going Yasha Maelstrom. He says I don't need the Mantha. I do see this defusal up on Foolishness. He's ready to fight. He's got that extra agility that's going to help him with the cloak and dagger. Uh, they're setting up on Team Tempest here. They know he doesn't have their Juggernaut. In goes the Clockwork with the Cogs with the Battery Assault on top of the Visage. There's the Link. However, Taters is on top of them. There's the stun. CM oh. ulti doing that AoE damage. Slark is just trying to get out of there, but he goes straight for the CM, and unfortunately, it's not enough. Foolishness trying to pick off the back line. Akab. <laughs> However, he's going to get picked God up here damn. as well. Akab showing no fear and just dropping the ulti. He's got a Ricky backstabbing him. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to put this ultimate down. Mm -hmm. So the Juggernaut just came in, peeked in, and dropped his R, and then walked up into their juggle. <laughs> Thinking to farm, however, the team is saying we need to push. Good hug from Ashandre. He's gonna try to make use of it. Will the Radiant team react in time to deal with it? No, they will not, as the CM is gonna go down. Hazard yet forward here. He wants to fight. They don't want to lose these racks. If you're gonna get one person on your team hooked and die when you're pushing and killing a T3, you want it to be your five. So that's probably the best outcome they could have gotten there. That was best case Ontario. Best case Ontario. Uh, as 100 me is moving up here. He's going to have the hook shot in a second here. He's thinking about it. His team is pretty far behind him. So if he does go in, he will be, he'll have to survive for a bit. Yeah, going back to that last team fight mid, the, the Ricky's tricks of the trade unfortunately didn't catch anyone in it. And the CM was able to position in the trees and dealt a ton of damage with that freezing field. A few patches ago, that would have been a death sentence for the CM, but yeah. the plus 20 bonus <laughs> that armor. Is, actually, I love that change. I feel like CM needed that, because previously, you're up against the Slark, he just looks at you and he just melts your face off when during your ultimate. Like, It's not a fun ultimate. He just bats his eyelashes at you. <laughs> just, just looks at you with his fishy face. Stupid. Slark. Yeah, talking Han, at least, on Glacius, which is huh. the CM equivalent, you could... uh. Essentially, frostbite yourself, increasing your armor, and then ulti. If you wanted to. It was still suboptimal. Nice Alright, so foolishness here. Team Tempest look as though they're looking for a fight. I think they need to make a little bit of space so the Slark can get his Shadow Blade up and become even more sneaky. But they're going to catch Monster out middle. Taters is still there. Oh. The hook's going to come out. They're going to pick him up. Inkswell on Ash and Array, and it's going to stun. There's the Link. Clockwork is going in. He does have cogs. He's going to put him a cob in the cogs here. Parker is around, however. He's going to try to keep him off. Sly is going to try to run. However, there's a centaur and the little birdies on him here. Foolishness looking to pick off the back line as his support is going to go down. And Foolishness is just going to bail out a little bit here as it got a little bit too hard. Slark trying to make space of this uh, space. Trying to make work of this space uh, down in bottom lane as he's going to try to take pick up a T1 for his team. He's nearly done that shadow blade. That's... That's when he wants to fight. Right now, he's he's finding it hard to engage in these fights and catch people out and it's because he hasn't picked that item up yet. That is value. However, it is also an issue that they have a Ricky Maru on their team, which means the Radiant side are already picking up yeah. a lot of detection to find him. Tater is looking for Hazard yet forward down bottom here, but he's just going to hop away. As the dire, or the Radiant side do start Roshan... Dyer are trying to set up here. Monster is there. Ooh. In goes the clockwork. He's looking to steal it, but unfortunately he can't get it. Like, bold play. I respect it. you got to go for that. Listen, 100 me, you get the Medal of Honor. As Monster is going to go down to the Dyer side, but they're going to try to get out here so they don't lose anybody. Oh no, the Juggernaut does see the Slark. He knows not to put his Omni on him. Ashen Ray is just going to try to walk away as the Witch Doctor puts the ulti on him. And unfortunately, it looks push. like he is going to go down here. The Slark getting caught out as well as Parker is going to spin on the Slarky Malarkey as he's trying to reach him, but he's going to go down as well. Foolishness tries to help out. And unfortunately, oh, but there's the tricks or the Cloak and Dagger as Grimstork hops in here, putting down the Silence. Ricky does a sweet blink out to the side here, and he's going to get away as they chase the Grimstroke up to this T3 top. Which is going to get forwarded and get that multi-shot off. Dropping a lot of damage on the Radiant side. Here's the Radiant setting up for Rax. Beautiful Dyer's escape. coming back one at a time. Beautiful escape from the Rikimaru that fight. I did not expect him to live through that tricks of the trade. <laughs> that was very tactful. There's the hook. It's going to get a range creep. It was very close to getting Parker there though. 
Shoot for the stars, man. Shoot for the gosh darn stars. All right, so Team Tempest A is a little bit on the back foot here, but they can definitely come back. Slark and Ricky look like they're hunting a little bit. The game's is... slowly starting to tilt towards Sync Cats here. If we're looking at the at the charts, they've slowly been gaining this lead, and uh, as long as they can hold on to this and use this Roshan effectively, I can only oh. see it increasing. Oh, foolish. It's... Uh, it tries to go on only difference, but only difference does force staff away. The Pudge is looking for a hook. He goes in the Roche pit. Can he get a sneaky hook here? No, just checking. So it is dangerous for them to fight here. This Jug still has the Aegis. The Team Tempest A are some true blooded Canadians. We the North. We're not afraid. They're saying, we'll come out. We'll fight you. So uh, Sly down here on the Witch Doctor, trying to find him out. Ashen Ray's going to hit the hook and the Devour. Is it Dismember? Yeah, Dismember. dismember. Devour from Not uh, devour. Han. Devour from Han. <laughs> Back in the Han days. Ladies Our apologies. I'm a broken man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all I want is for them to replace Chen with Ophelia. That's all I've ever asked for. It's never going to happen. All right, so... The Radiant team are going to pop Centaur oh. ulti. They're looking to get a little bit aggressive here. Sly is going to hook together both the birdies that usually fly <laughs> together either which way. That's very sad. Ash and Ray tries to save Sly, but unfortunately the damage is way too much. Ash and Ray providing a ceremonial execution to his teammate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I won't let them kill you, my friend. Let me do it. All right, as the Dyer prepare to defend, the Radiant are going to pick up their other shrine here. This Visage, incredibly effective this game. He has been doing a lot of work. Um, the only times he's had trouble is when he gets his birds and himself caught in the smoke screen. That's usually mm -hmm. when he's died. Um, but he's been pretty good about keeping them pretty split and getting them out of the smoke screen when they're in. <sighs> There's the hook on the Juggernaut. They do grab him. The Silence does get put on him. He does still have that Aegis, however, so he is coming back if they do take him down. Tricks of the Trade doing work. Juggernaut pops the Omni. He's going to get Sly in the back lane. This CM tries the ulti, however. Sark is going to take him down. Jug's going to man fight foolishness as the Visage drops Soul Assumption. It hits more than two, two, hits two targets at this point, Oof. doing huge amounts of damage. So that is two down for the Dire Asylum. T-Tempest does buy back. On Sly. You're going to have a hard time defending this right now. I don't believe there is any detection down for the Radiant team. So this Slark can pounce on Parker. The Aegis is down. This Alpha Wolf is so value as well that the Visage, the only difference is picked up here. The bonus damage on the entire team is like... Nobody looks so at that wolf. It's just a wolf. There's the hook on the Visage. The silence is going to go out. The chain is perfect here. Visage is going to go down. The Wish Doctor is going to start walking away here. As the Alpha Wolf is also going to die. Brave soldier boy. So that's going to force the Radiant 2 back up as they lost their hook. main source of push. Hook up at 5 seconds. They're looking for the Witch. Oh, they got Ooh, him. and they grab him. Oh, he wants more. They want more. The hook is up. They're going to back off, though. They're going to be a little bit cautious. It's only Slark and Clockwork. So if I were a Team Tempest right now, I'd take this opportunity to get some vision out if they still have wards. Hopefully they do. Yep, the Pudge does have three Observer wards, so if Ashen Ray is feeling a little brave, a little frisky, he can get some sight out and about. So a quick item check for what's going on. we got a four staff blade mail on the clockwork, so he's got most of his kit there. All he wants now is to finish his boots and an Aghanims. Pudge has got a blade mail, so as a position 5 Pudge, like, you're rich if you have a blade mail. Um, the Ricky is farm is slowed down. He had a really good start. Picked up that defusal. He's got a Yasha now. He's working on uh, an S and Y. Uh, the Slark has finished his uh, Shadow Blade and is moving into a defusal, which is a pretty okay pickup, I think. I'm not a big Slark player, but it seems like it'd be useful against their team. It's pretty decent. Um, I usually see Starks going, like, Echo Saber. Uh, next after their yeah. shadow blade. Oh, here we look. Uh, as well as a stun. They're going to pick up monster. However, Taters is right there <laughs> as he's going to come in and not stomp. Oh, he made a choice. Big trying to get a full ulti off. 
They're chasing here. The centaur has not built into blank. He's chosen to just go for those tanky items as his ultimate has gotten him into fights. This is what uh, Team Tempest needs is little picks that cost them nothing to slow down the momentum of Sync Cats because as soon as Sync Cats walks up this hill as a 5 on 5, they're probably taking this T3 and mega in your team. So they need to be out of the base trying to get these little picks, preventing them from doing that. So Sync Cats uh, finding the ward up top here uh, on top of that high area. Good D ward. You want to push in here. Haters was fighting the clockwork, but clockwork just TPs out, goes back to base. A Sing Cats is looking to set up, and Team Tempest A is setting up for their final defense. Oh, Sorry, like... almost finds the Witch Doctor. Ricky looking for start more. Rotating top. Jug's TPing out. He knows his team. He's going towards mids. They're going to find middle. They find Foolishness. Who's going to tricks of the trade? The dust is halfway done. He's going to hop over to Sly there, who is out and about. However, the Juggernaut's going to take him down with the little birdies. With the birdies. It's, it's okay, interesting let's... that you can chain the birdies. I've never seen that reaction before. <laughs> Please stop calling them the birdies. I can't handle the it. The birdies. <laughs> the doves are the flying birdies. at you. This is what it sounds like. Oh, the hook on Taters, but I don't think that's the guy you want to hook. As the... Dire team is going to put the damage on them. Here comes the radio team. The cogs are out. Zoning out the CM and stopping her ultimate. There's the Jug Omni Slash. It's going to take out two of Team Tempest A. As Slark is going to try to go in here. They're chasing down 100 me. Monster's saying, I want revenge. And there's a little hit on him as he goes down. And they take these top racks. The buybacks are coming out. They're looking to fight. Tricks of the Trade is going to pick up the Witch Doctor. The Slark is looking for something. He's going to go on Monster. However, the rest of the team is there. They're saying, leave our lady alone. 100 me going to try back up as well as they're going to catch out. Foolishness in the middle. Taters takes him out. Fortunately, leaving Hazard yet forward and 100 me alone. And there is GG to a end GG. game two. Game two Beautiful followed a game very game. similar trajectory to game one. Uh, they got that early lead and they never let up on it and kept fighting. Uh, their mid played a huge role in this game, Visage. Really, like, it's really hard to take a team fight when you're, it's like a 9 on 5, because you've got two birds, two of the birdies, you've got the Alpha Wolf, and you've got the Juggernaut Healing Ward. It's just a whole lot of stuff running at you. Alright, checking the stats at the end of the game, we give up my support of the game. Because I love supports, oh my gosh. Cab, I can't give it to you again. I'm not allowed. It's not okay. Um, you know what? Jeez. I, you know what? This is this is my reasoning. Akab, you got it first game. All right? You deserve it. Ashandri, you took a chance. All right? Pudge is not a traditional support or pr traditional five. But for that, you get support of the game for being a brave boy. Very brave boy. Okay. And excellent Sly. hooks under that T1 top. That Those are excellent hooks. Monster, Sly. Honorable mentions for being amazing CM, amazing Grimstroke. You guys made the plays, all right? Those alties, clutch. Utes, McGutes. And, uh, the rest of you cores, you better bow before your supports. And that's where I'm going to end it. <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, we'll catch you next time that we play a game. If you want to watch our games, we are we play on the Mike Gleasons. Uh, yeah, and I guess that's all we got. That's all we got. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out. <laughs>